Cause everyone rather be tased Shocking them away from reality that will never be free Still trying to figure out what's holding me Black seed oil take over me Double entendre if you know your groceries You're tuned into Can I Live? Hosted by Benny, aka Poetically Williams the Third, And this is Plant Based Living with Joanna, aka Planet Banana Coming from London, she's half German and half Ghanaian a stubborn optimist that is enthusiastic about earth and eco-spirituality. She inspires others through her education of plant-based living through her blog, Planet Banana, where she gives tips on how to stay optimistic during these times. Listen. <laughs> All right. So I see you got the uh, salt lamp behind you. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. yes yeah. Of come, course. On, come on now. Uh, how long have you had it? Um, I got that one for Christmas. Nice, nice, nice. Do you feel what's the what's the kind of like what's the energy you feel from the salt lamp having in the room? I it, I just, for me it just it's got this calming energy. So like every night I've got it on. I've got two. I've got one here and then I've got one on the other side of the room. Okay. And um and yeah, it's just when it's time to chill and kind of to wind down. The energy lamp helps. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Love it. Okay, okay. What's uh what's some of your like if you had to just say pick three things? All right, this is how we're gonna start. If you had to pick three things to put into a bag, this is the mystery bag. Okay. Uh, essentials, and when I mean essentials, they're like your spiritual essentials, your life, your holistic essentials. What would those three items be? Three items, okay. My essential oils. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Got a whole pack. I've got my diffuser going right now as well. <laughs> so nice. definitely that. Um, I've got a gratitude crystal. So that's like right next to my bed. And like either in the mornings or in the evening, I'll just hold it and think about what I'm great grateful for. So yeah, that's yeah, my gratitude okay. crystal. Definitely that. And number three. Um, I'm not sure. Probably a book. Okay. But, yeah. Okay, which what, what, what book? Do you know the Seven Spiritual Laws of Success? I've heard of it. I haven't it's, read it. I've heard of it. It's so good. Read it. It's per okay. like because it's Taking seven notes. days. It's perfect for a week as well. So for, on every day of the week, you can like look at one law and kind of make it your thing for the day. And that's kind of what I do sometimes. Um, and yeah, they're really really good. Okay, Seven Laws of Spiritual Success. And this is by who, uh, Deepak Chopra. Okay, I see. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, I've heard. I've heard of it, but I have not. I have not dived into it. So thank you. You're the second person. You're welcome. Oh, really nice. A sign right there. That's a sign. I need to go ahead and start reading that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is your sign. Yeah. It's um, and I feel like we all have to have those signs. We all get those signs, right? And it's like paying attention, knowing what the sign. Yeah, it's telling me in the moment, you know, I'm big into numerology and, and kind of like numbers. All right, it's, you know, oh yes, yeah, you know, okay, I see this number here. What's what, what are the angels telling me right now? And yeah. I guess, I guess for you, like, what, what's 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 up? What, what are as we talk about plant based and talk about like uh, holistic living? What was that sign to you that kind of said, okay, this is the pathway for me? And how was that look? How did that look for you? Um. Ooh, that's a good question. I feel like um, um, so there were different parts of so four. It was about four years ago when I first came into contact with like plant based living. Okay. And um, uh, it was around my birthday, and all of a sudden I got. I was reading articles, even though I'd never really been into the topic before. These articles would pop up on social media or whatever. I was watching, my best friend came to me, was like, watch these documentaries. And then I think my mom said she was trying out veganism, you know, all these things separate from one another, but all around the same time. And then I was like, okay, let me, let me look into this now as well. Like, yeah. Wow. Wow. So shout out to your mom. So Yeah, right? <laughs> that's interesting because typically it's, it's, it's where we're getting our parents on the board uh, with this. So when your mom, how, did she stick with it? How was the discipline? Were you both together like we're doing this? Um, uh, she, well, my mom's like an OG. She's been all my life. She's been super spiritual. She's okay. been vegetarian on and off. Um, and 
uh, yeah, like just when I was younger, I wasn't really into it. And I feel like did, would she have had my support, she would have probably stuck with it more as well. Because like I said, it was on and off for her. But then when we both had made that decision, yeah, now we send each other recipes. Oh, wow. And like, it's really, really cool. Nice, nice. So when you look at it from that from that standpoint of having someone like your mom on this path and on this lifestyle, not just a diet, because some people look at it as just a diet. It's a lifestyle. Hundred percent. Yeah. And and with you saying your mom is spiritual, how has that impacted you spiritually? Um, it's kind of like I said, when I was growing up, I wasn't really into it, but I was familiar with all of the like practices or it's you know law of attraction things like that i've already heard it all from my mom and kind of was like yeah yeah all right you talk about that it wasn't that i was ridiculing it or anything it was just uh, i knew she believed in it and i was fine with that it was it just wasn't for me but then when i started to see like synchronicities in my life and starting to open up to to that site more i was like oh my god like my mind is blown i've known this all of my life why didn't i do anything with it yeah it started all connected like the dots started connecting yeah interesting interesting so that's you know we all like i feel like we all have these different purposes um with our gifts and like just not fulfilling ourselves but like fulfilling the world and yeah. i see with that doing that not just like okay i'm gonna be healthy but you also push that message too with your blog yeah yeah and, and um, yeah, because I felt like um, once I had started and I like, told people, told friends about it and stuff like that, I got more and more questions and people were like, oh, but I thought, I thought it's hard or I thought, you know, it's expensive, you know, with all these kind of assumptions about the lifestyle. And I was like, right. no, 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 let me, let me talk about it. Let me tell people how it really is. And um, yeah. yeah, that's why I started my blog. <laughs> nice nice so you were like let me get set the record straight let me yeah exactly right and i like that i love it because that takes a different type of courage that takes a different type of energy. <laughs> you're like let's go and with that Thanks. you also bring some education and what i was seeing was um the fair trade right and so i saw you how you had an article about the fair trade one of my questions to you with that is kind of how how farmers can they in this sense, be protected by the fair trade, you know, with COVID happening? And is it possible that fair trade could fail them? And I guess if you could share some light on what fair trade is for those that would, that don't know. And so it's like three questions and all. Okay. Okay. So fair trade. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so basically the fair trade organization, um, I'm sure everyone has seen like the little symbol of you know the green and blue i think it is on like things like coffee bananas um you know different things that we import um and what they do is they they take far farmers kind of under under their wing really farmers have to pay to um kind of start to be certified fair trade but then fair trade guarantees that these farmers get fair payment for what 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 they're providing um and yeah that it's just all um a transparent and ethical exchange um i read that they're doing a lot right now so they have these producer networks in countries all over the work and they're all over the world and they're working with the farmers directly and kind of trying to figure out how they can how they can help gotcha. um I, if they can fail them, I'm, I'm not sure. I think it also depends on the industry. So for example, coffee and banana, I don't think they have much to worry about. Like we go through so much coffee right now. Right. <laughs> but um, then there's other industries like the cotton industry. So I don't know if you've um, heard about what was going on in the fashion industry generally now during COVID. So what they've done is that they've canceled a lot of orders, like 2 billion, dollars worth of orders um, from garment workers in Bangladesh. Um, so they're suffering and they're in the news right now. But then we're looking a step further and a step further, that's the cotton farmers who are providing these garment worker factories, right? right. Um, so they're not impacted yet because they've already, you know, passed on the, the cotton to all of the garment worker factories, mm -hmm. but they will uh, come autumn, I read because then that that's when they would usually, you know, when there would be another order for cotton and that's when they would supply all of that. 
Um, so I read that a lot of cotton farmers in Africa actually are now diverting their crops so they can at least make a little bit of money. So then now they're trying to, you know, get food and, you know, make that. Um, so, yeah, I hope that that, you know, the fair trade organization is doing is helping yeah. them out. But Yeah. Yeah. And um, wow. You know, you said you said a lot of things. To hit on. <laughs> well, first off, where are you exactly located? I'm in London, in the UK. Right. Okay. London and UK. So this is my question. What's the news like over there as far as, I guess, with COVID for you for you all? Like, what's, what's the news like for just, yeah, what is it like? To be honest with you, <laughs> I you, don't you really follow what? the news. Well, okay. No, no, I'm, that's cool. That's cool. I'm going to tell you, the only reason I even happen to even glimpse and know what the news like is because when i check on my mom that's what she's plugged okay. into literally she has cnn plugged into her her body <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. okay. but, but the yeah so i i, I respect I, I respect that answer because it's like you have to keep you have to just it's you have to block it right uh, yeah i feel i feel like you know i keep up to date with things like, do I have to wear a mask now when I go outside or, mm. you know, things like that or what, what's going on with public transport? But then for the rest of it, yeah. I do. I feel like I don't need to know that. Why do I need to know? Why do I need to look at death toll tickers and like mm. find out, you know, well, what does that do for me? Nothing. Really. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's the biggest. It builds anxiety. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right now. Um, yeah. So with uh this life of clean eating with this life of uh spiritual intake when i say spiritual intake it's like knowing what i put in my body is here to help my body right mm -hmm. what are the what are some facts that you could give to someone and say that would just make them stop in their tracks like this is why i'm not going to just shove you down vegan life but this is why you should think about it yeah um oh, there's so many facts <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah. i feel like there's one and i feel i thought that that was really really known and i feel like everyone should know that but mm -hmm. we know and there's like peer-reviewed studies and it's it's a fact that whole food like that whole food plant-based diet can prevent and actually reverse so many things like heart disease mm -hmm. high blood pressure high cholesterol obesity type 2 diabetes so many things and um you know we're all going crazy and like mm -hmm. literally stopping our reality over a few hundred thousand deaths which obviously are tragic but a hundred thousand deaths globally and then there's this number one killer which kills millions which is heart disease and people just don't really want to hear that you know you, you it is preventable all you have to do is change your habits really that's mm -hmm. all it is um but yeah that's kind of it shows how attached we are to our habits and our traditions and i feel that's where we come full circle and kind of can include mindfulness because that meditation mindfulness helps us to detach from these things to detach right. from you know from these habits from yeah things like yeah, that no, you said the word attachment right there is that's that's a tough one that's a tough one how, how are you practicing to detach um, so, you know, that's one of the things in the book that I, in the okay. seven spiritual laws. So one day, I think it's the Saturday, <laughs> so I'm struggling with Saturdays most. So okay. because it, at the end of every chapter, it says applying whatever you've learned in that chapter. And one of the laws is to detach yourself from everything. So on those days, I like put little post-its everywhere and like today I shall judge nothing that occurs and like just to remind myself and it works. It wow. really works. Like I felt a yeah. shift like sometimes when I feel something that comes up and I'll be like, okay, no, 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 I'm detaching from it. It's all right. Wow. That, that's cool. Okay. I'm going to have to, I'm going to practice that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you know how that works. <laughs> all right. <laughs> man, that's cool. That's cool. Oh, uh, man. I let me ask you this in you talked about like people talk about the cost right that seems to be the biggest uh being vegan is 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 very costly how would you say plant-based life or in eating vegan how would you say is is fine like financially accessible for you like how, how are you making it um so two things about that like people say it's expensive 
-hmm. to, you know, they don't want to spend that kind of money on their food, but then they choose to allocate that money towards things like, you know, clothes, iPhones, um, stuff like that. So I feel like I am, most of my money goes to food. Like right. that's a priority for me, like spending, you know, getting good food when I can afford it. I'll get organic and stuff like that, just because I feel like it's an investment in, in myself. It's an investment mm -hmm. in what I put into my body. Right. Um, but then also, um, I feel like a plant or a vegan lifestyle is only more expensive if you go for the substitutes, you know, the meat substitutes, the cheese substitutes, all of that. If you really go for the, um, the staples, rice, fruit, vegetables, there's not that much of a difference in, in price, you know? Yeah, those substitutes are... Yeah, I, I wasn't big on the substitutes because mainly just how all the processed uh, and chemicals yeah. feel added into it, which can still mess up, like they can still be bad to your, yeah. to your meals, you know, and, and, and things of that nature. Uh, it's it's like that's the trick that people have to use to, to make that transition. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Right, right then, it's like getting off that transition. Like I know for me, cheese was the toughest thing. Same. So, like, so that, I was getting ready to ask you, what, like my last question was going to be, what was the toughest thing? Hundred percent cheese. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I chose. Yeah. <laughs> I chose to go vegan. Like I think it was in 2016. But then for me to actually transition to a fully vegan lifestyle, it took me about a year, just oh, wow. because of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cheese is tough. The cheese is tough. <laughs> oh wow, wow, wow. Um, I'm actually. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, go ahead. But then you learn more and more about. Well, I did anyway because I was really interested in, you know, the what's going on in our brains. Why are we so attached to all of this? And you learn about how cheese, how you're actually addicted to cheese, and uh, again, such a strong attachment to something. And I was was happy to eventually have that to solve. Yeah. Uh. Cheese is a tough one. Pizza, had to let it. Do you do you mess with the uh kind of like the vegan pizzas? Sometimes, yeah, I do. <laughs> which, which brands do you kind of would you suggest? Uh, well, I don't know if you've got the same. So we. Um, oh, okay. that's a good point. Well, let me hear what you, what's, what's in the UK. That might be. <laughs> So shout out to time. Vegan Doco. Okay. <laughs> it's this new. Um, I think they're quite small, and they make such good pizza. Honestly. Mm -hmm. Vegan Doco, vegan, okay. yeah, vegan Doco. All right, so have right. a look on Instagram. Look at those yeah. pizzas. Okay, I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> Doco. Okay, I like that. I like that. I like that. Nice. Um, yeah, and I know how do you have good fellas in the US? <sighs> yeah, no. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh Daya, are you familiar with Daya? No. <laughs> okay, so yeah, but this is too well, well look, we now when, when we when we cross uh borders and cross the seas, we when you when you're over in the state somewhere, you'll be able to say, Okay, I remember him saying die or something like yeah, that. Yeah, okay. And, and when I go over, I'm like, I, say, I remember uh, Goodfellas and yep. what was the, the other one was Doku. I wrote Vegan Doku. Vegan Doku, yes. All right.